All right, everybody, welcome. This is George Gonzalez, owner of Nightscape here in San Bernardino. Today we are going to be talking about ceramic bearings. So is it just marketing hype? Are they really worth the extra money? Um, is there any difference in performance? We'll kind of get into all of those details. I want to preface this by saying two things. Number one, the, you know, I, am, I own a skate shop. So although it can be misconstrued that I am trying to purposely sell you very expensive bearings because obviously I stand to benefit from it, that is not the case. I try to, uh, and you'll see, I try to be as realistic with this information as possible. Try to lend my experience and also whatever science I know uh, to it. Um, number two, uh, the way that I got this information was I just did a quick Google search on the benefits of ceramic bearings versus um, still bearings, and it gave me some bullet points. So I wanted to touch on every single one of the bullet points it brought up so that I can address them or set that at least be addressed if you do a search online and wonder if it applies or how it applies to inline skating. So we'll go ahead and jump into it. So what makes ceramic bearings different from still bearings? So most ceramic bearings that you'll see for inlines will be more correctly described as hybrid ceramic bearings. Well, that means that the uh, ball bearings inside of here are made out of silicon nitride, which is the ceramic. You know, it's not like pottery. When you, I know when people think of ceramic, they think of like the pots outside. That's not uh, the same ceramic, right? It's just an artificial or man-made material, essentially. A full hybrid bearing would actually have the race right here, which you can see is made out of steel. So all, that's all the metal parts. That would actually be ceramic as well in a full ceramic bearing. Again, that's full ceramic bearings are, or ceramic, although it is harder than steel, it also tends to be more brittle. So if you were to have a full ceramic bearing and put it in the applications that we do as inline skaters, odds are that it's going to break or crack. Um, it's not meant to be put under the, the forces that we'd use um, you know, when we're outside in the streets and things like that. So that's why you rarely see a full ceramic bearing. Um, so again, silicon nitride, which is what the ball bearings are made out of, is up to about 30% harder than steel. You know, so what does that mean? That means it's much more durable. Right, so as you're skating along, your ball bearings tend to bounce around, right? Um, with the steel bearing, even though it's fairly hard, it, it's also fairly soft. Do a little experiment by smacking a handle with it, you'll see that it'll deform. Same thing happens when we're skating around. As the ball bearing's bouncing around, eventually it gets, you know, dents and things on it, microscopic dents, that just makes it not perform as well as it does right out of the box. Ceramic bearings also wear, however, the ball bearings themselves don't wear because the ball bearings are actually harder than the steel that they're enclosed in. Typically they'll wear the race out. So they'll wear a line into the race, uh, which will account for a lot of, or which will account for, you know, any uh, inconsistencies or any movement of the ball bearings in there um, as they age. So that's the, you know, kind of the difference in, in the two as far as durability. Um, additionally, silicon nitride, you know, it's a much more uniform molecule. So the surface, Air, or the surface of the, uh, the ball bearing is gonna be much more smooth. It's gonna reduce the amount of friction significantly. So reduced friction means less energy lost to heat, which just makes them overall much more efficient. So there also is a weight reduction. Um, I will say this is negligible though, because the only thing that's different are the ball bearings inside. So they are made out of silicon nitrate, which can have up to a 30, 40% weight reduction. However, because the ball bearings are so small and such a, a minor part of the overall weight of the bearing, I would say that the, the reduced weight is probably going to be negligible. But it is, you know, it is measurable if you wanted to measure it. It'd probably be within the grams, if not around a gram. It's not going to be significant. So um, now increased speed. So again, there's two, two ways to talk about this. So for sure, there is a lowered friction coefficient, right? Which is going to translate into um, more speed, technically. However, mo most of the speed is going to be at greater, at greater speeds, right? So industrial type of speeds, think of a machine rotating at thousands of RPMs, right? Um, we're just not doing that kind of stuff with inline skating. But however, it does, doesn't mean that you're not going to notice the difference in speed. I personally noticed the difference in speed right away. Um, not only a difference in speed immediately, but a consistent difference in speed. It stays going just as fast for, for much, much longer than a brand new set of steel bearings uh, from experience. Um, the other thing is corrosion resistance. They won't rust like a typical bearing is going to rust, right? Uh, again, because it's not made out of steel. So if you skate along the beach a lot, if you're skating wetter areas or whatever, um, these things are not going to be as prone to 
rusting. They won't be prone to rusting at all. The race may rust, right, the outer part. However, the balls themselves will stay uh, just as smooth as they were when you first got the bearings all throughout the, um, the aging of them. So uh, that leads us into the next one, which is uh, they can be lubrication free. So technically, all bearings can be lubrication free. So uh, contrary to what most people think, um, lubrication typically actually adds a little bit of friction. Right? I know that it's kind of counterintuitive, but the reason we use lubrication is primarily to, in to increase the lifespan of our bearings. Right? If you had steel bearings and you ran them without any lubrication, they would run great for a little while until they rust and seize up on you and then they don't work at all. So the primary focus of lubrication is to make sure that they don't rust not only while we're using them, but while they're being stored inside of a skate shop or wherever, right? We, don't, we just want to protect the, the outside from oxidizing and things like that. Um, so keep that in mind when it comes to corrosion resistance. Again, they are not, uh, they're not made of steel, so not going to rust. That, that's really what it breaks down to. Um, okay, that segues into the next thing, which is uh, reduced maintenance. You just simply do not have to take care of these things. So I purposely ran my bearings uh, without messing with them at all. I didn't clean them. You know, I, I just kept them in the wheels as I rotated them. Uh, but I tried to neglect them because I really wanted to see how they would perform if I just left them alone because I heard that they perform really well over time. And these are the bearings that I skated for like 15 months. And as you can see, not only did it still spin fine, but they're, they're still quiet, right? This one, this one makes a little noise. Um, I think this is one that I cleaned actually recently. Uh, but you can see it works just fine. And again, these are old bearings, 15 months, thousands of miles on them. So that's what you can look for your bearings rolling after 15 months. Um, now, while they are, do require less maintenance. So one of the things I noticed is they did, my bearings did seize up once. I had two bearings that seized up, but it was much different than when a steel bearing seizes up because when a steel bearing seizes up, it's because it's rusted. Um, and you can get them rolling again, but it will never be quite the same because the rust doesn't come from nowhere, right? Rust is iron oxide, which means that the iron from the steel bearings, uh, typically the ball bearings and the race, whatever, but the iron from the bearing, whatever part it is, has combined with a molecule of oxygen or a part, yeah, a molecule of oxygen from either water or from the air and has created rust, right? And the iron that goes, that goes into that rust is gonna come from the bearing itself. So if you were to put the ball bearings under a microscope, you would see the holes and all the damage left by rust when, whenever they do rust. So it's much different than when my ceramic bearings seized up because when they seized up, it wasn't like a hard seize. It was like really gummy is the way to describe it. So I think what happened was just like dirt and filth got in there more than anything um, and just gummed up the bearing. So all I did was blast it with some WD-40, got it spinning, and then I threw it into my sonic cleaner and got it cleaned up and it was rolling, you know, you saw how well it was rolling after I was done with it. So that's in stark contrast to when a, uh, a steel bearing, you know, has the same issue. So another benefit, another reason why you don't need to take care of them is any rocks or any impurities that get into the uh, protection, the you know, protective uh, seal right here, they'll get pulverized by the ceramic bear ball bearings that are inside of the race. Uh, again, just because as, as just as it is harder than steel, it's going to be harder than the rocks and harder of most of the contaminants you're going to find in the street while you're skating. So just literally pulverize them, turns them into, into sand and just, you know, gets rid of them. So, um, now the last two things we'll mention are things that got brought up. They're bullet points that got brought up on the search, but I, I don't think they necessarily, uh, apply to inline skating, but I figured I'd touch on them anyway if they're gonna come up on a search while you're searching of you know the benefits of ceramic. So temperature stability. So ceramic bearings don't expand and contract uh, at high temperatures the same way that still will, right? Um, however, you know what I mean? I guess some of you think you're you know the fastest people on the world, whatever, right? And maybe you are, I'm proud of you, man, right? However, however, um, we just simply do not put our bearings through the same forces that you're going to be putting them through in an industrial application, right? We're not NASA. We're not, you know, a machine blasting out thousands of, of widgets, you know, per second, things like that. So, um, yes, it's factually true that ceramic bearings hold up better at higher temperatures. However, uh, I just don't think it's something that we really need to worry about as skaters, right? As, as well, same thing with this next thing, which is they are non-magnetic. So, 
again, since the ball bearings are not made out of steel or iron, um, they will not over time with the amount of kinetic energy we, we use develop a magnetic, uh, that magnetic field. They won't magnetize, right? Now, I don't know if you've ever used tools or anything, right? You can scrub or scrape a, a screwdriver on some metal, whatever, and, and get, get it to get a little charge and you can pick up screws, right? That's kind of the phenomenon that I'm talking about. Um, because the balls aren't still, you won't get that. However, the resistance you get from that magnetic field or that, you know, whatever that is that, that pops up is it's negligible, right? Like, I don't think uh, people are, tour are always switching out their bearings because they're like, oh, they're magnetized now. Like, I'm losing, you know, X amount of miles per hour. Like, I can't, you know, I got to get some whatever. So, um, you know, if you're NASA, though, you know, or some of the other people that, that pioneered the use of ceramic bearings, that stuff is important, right? Like, you don't want to have a random magnetic field in some random spot um, for no good reason, right? So... Again, something that is true, but something that's not necessarily applicable to inline skating. Um, I think that's everything, right? Durability, reduced friction, reduced weight, speed, corrosion resistance, lubrication free, reduced maintenance, temperature stability, and non-magnetic. So, now to sum it up, after all that information, do I think ceramic bearing is worth it? And my answer would be yes. 100% yes. And why? Well, I think if you're, there's two ways to go if you're looking for performance bearings, right? You get a high-end performance steel bearing or you go ceramic. Um, high-end performance steel bearings are gonna cost you, you know, minimum 60, 65, close, you know, upwards of 80, sometimes closer to even 140 bucks, the price of these ceramics. And these ceramics are gonna last you Let's just say even if it lasts twice as long as one set of steel bearings. In my opinion, they last about three times as long, minimum, right? But let's just say twice. And if you buy two sets of those high-end bearings, it's like buying one set of these ceramic bearings. So it's kind of up to you to do with that information what you will. Um, I'm a believer. I come from aggressive skating. Now, my opinion about bearings and aggressive skating is the exact opposite. I think you should get the minimum bearing that you can possibly skate with. I personally use a lot of generic bearings. Now I'll use like the base bearing of high-end brands just because I, I do care about how they roll, but I know I'm gonna destroy them when I do aggressive skating, right? I'm jumping off of stuff, I'm you know in the street, just like, I just know I'm gonna mess them up because of the type of skating I'm doing. Versus with ceramic bearings, I'm typically gonna put these on a big wheel setup or on a setup that I use to cruise throughout the streets and or on the trails and I want to have every single benefit that I, I can have and I do feel like ceramic bearings are one of the best investments you can make if you're looking ways to really get the most bang for your buck on a high-end investment into your skates. So again, don't take my word for it. Like I said, full disclosure, I make money if you buy expensive bearings, right? So, um, but I am a believer as well. I am a believer. I skated them in this setup. I have another setup. They, they came with ILQ nine bearings. So I'm just going to skate them because they, they came embedded. It was a aluminum core wheel. Otherwise I would have went back to ceramic bearings immediately. So that's everything I have. If you want to, if you have any questions that were left unanswered, or if you want to go further or check out things, feel free to give me a call. You can send me an email or you can, uh, shoot me a, de uh, a DM, whatever, whatever way is easiest. Uh, but I'm here to answer any questions that you need. So, so that's everything that I have for ceramic bearings. If you guys have any questions, if you want any follow-up, feel free to give me a call, send me a DM, shoot me an email, whatever way is best for you, and I'll do my best to get back to you ASAP. Until the next time, I'll talk to you guys soon.